Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So you have heard me say in several videos that we have some plans for Belle, and today I'm gonna talk to you about what they are. So as you know, Belle just weaned her baby and everything is going well that way. I'm so happy that considering all things, it was a smooth transition. However, we do have some things that we need to address with Belle. When I first purchased Belle last February, I did know that she was a little bit weak in the hind, but that all made sense because she didn't have a lot of training based on my evaluation and then finding out she was pregnant. And sometimes that can do interesting things to the body. So I wasn't super concerned, but I just kept my eye on it. So what I noticed with her is that she is again weak in the hind, but she now has a lot of trouble picking up her back right leg. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. And it's gotten a little bit worse and it doesn't have anything to do with the mud or anything like that. I really do think that it's something else that's going on. And that's why we're going to take care of it today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about it. So of course, when I noticed this, I started talking to my vet and we decided to wait until it was closer to weaning time to do a full examination out at the farm because it's not like she was unhappy or miserable or couldn't, you know, be out in the pasture or anything like that. That's why we decided to wait and do the workup a little bit closer to weaning. So essentially I had my vet come out and we did a full set of x-rays. We did a full lameness exam. Hi, honey. All of that. Okay. So absolutely nothing came up on the x-rays. At first we thought there was like a fracture, but then she sent the radiographs off to the radiologist and he said they were basically normal, just a little bit of arthritis, which we see in a lot of horses, totally normal. But she definitely was not picking up her leg normally. And again, I'm gonna show you a video of what I'm talking about regarding that. So after the full lameness exam, I mean, we did the flexions, we did the lameness, we did the radiographs, anything you could think of with no results. Like we had no idea what was going on, but something is just not right. Especially when, before all this happened, I got on her for a second time. I think I talked to you about how she felt a little bit explosive and my immediate thought was pain, right? Like obviously she doesn't have a lot of training or experience, but just the way that she felt underneath me, I felt like something was not right. And I want to do everything in my power to take care of Belle. I mean, she has given so much to me. I don't care about writing. I don't care about that. She has just been such a game changer, such a sweetheart. And she gave me beautiful Ezzy. Plus she's obviously just a special, gorgeous mare all on her own right? She's just amazing. And some people will just write things off like, oh yeah, like she's just weak in the hind or, oh, you know, it's just, she doesn't have training. And to me, no, mm -mm. I have to rule out that there isn't a physical issue, which there definitely is based on the way she's picking up her leg. And I'm not just going to like push her through that. Like, yeah, I definitely think she still has a weak hind end because of the lack of training, obviously, because she was pregnant and wasn't really trained much before, but no. I want to do everything in my power to take care of her. So what I have opted to do is take Belle to the university and do an entire exam in a bone scan. Because when we were doing the x-rays, like we started at the bottom of her leg, worked our way all the way up into the stifle, but then you can't really x-ray past that because there's too much muscle. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's just too dense of an area. So that's why I'm going to spend the money, which is thousands of dollars and take her to the university to figure out what the heck is going on. Because like I said, she is my responsibility. She has given so much to me and everything at Free Spirit Equestrian that I'm gonna do everything I can for her. So instead of just starting training and hoping for the best and seeing if it will improve, I wanna do this before I move forward in whatever direction is gonna be best for her. And I'll talk about that later because I have no idea what's going on with her, okay? Like she's okay. It's, it's not like, oh my gosh, like this is horrible, but she needs to be evaluated. Okay, we gotta figure out what's going on deeper. And I've just heard so many stories of horses that have been labeled crazy or bad or they're reactive and all these different things when there were seriously underlying major, major issues where that horse should have never been ridden. I'm not saying that's gonna be the case for her. It definitely could be, but I have no idea. But what I do know is that I'm not just gonna guess. I have learned enough about horses and especially buying auction horses or it doesn't even matter where they come from. I mean, all horses have issues to some extent. I mean, you cannot convince me there's not a horse with some type of issue, but I have learned enough where it's like, I'd rather do everything I can and do the full evaluation and spend the money than sit there and guess and put the horse through trauma put myself in danger. Like, could you imagine if I just started training her and she acted crazy or something like that and hurt me and all along it was a physical issue? Like, no, that is not okay. And then it's not okay for the horses that are sometimes written off as a bad horse when it's been a physical issue all along. 
So we are gonna be taking her to the university today. I'm gonna load her up in the trailer. She's gonna spend a few days there being analyzed and tested. And this is good timing actually because of the weaning. So she'll be off the property for a few days and then we'll have the results and pick her back up. So yeah, I don't know. The thing is, I mean, she's at the point like she cannot pick up that back right leg. I mean, she is struggling, okay? Like the farrier, the last trim and a few other trims has trimmed it on the ground and she gets very defensive about it. And she's great about picking up her hoof. So it's not like she's nervous about that. Like there's definitely something wrong and she's trying to tell us in a very kind way. We're gonna figure it out, girl. And again, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. It could be a neurological thing. She could have something going on with her pelvis. I don't know, okay? We could just sit here and guess all day, but that's why I'm taking her because I don't want to guess. I want to know. And again, I have no idea what the plan will be moving forward until I know what's going on with her. And I'm not selling her, okay? So, I mean, eventually that could be the plan. We're not talking about selling her right now, okay? So that's definitely not in the plan currently. But yeah, so let me show you what's going on with her leg. Yes, mama, you're so pretty. And when she's moving out, like walk, trot, canter, she doesn't appear to be lame. So I do think there is a low grade lameness in that back, right? But what I'm saying is like, she looks sound. Good mama, you're such a sweetheart. You're such a good girl. She really is just so sweet. And again, I just think it's important to pay attention to what your horse is telling you. My gut feeling says something is wrong. And I don't want anybody freaking out. Like, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm just addressing what's in front of me. Again, I know when I buy horses, and it doesn't matter where they're from, a lot of times auctions can be more risky, but even private sale is too. I go into it knowing that there's probably gonna be some type of issue, whether behavioral, training, or physical. Okay, so I take that on because I understand the risks. But thank God that she is here. Obviously, there's a lot of good homes out there, but just considering that she was pregnant and then now all of this, I'm just happy that at least she's with me and that we're going to take care of her. So let me show you. She's cool about picking up her legs. Good girl, mama. Good. Good job. Thank you. Good mama. Okay. So she's great about picking up the legs, but watch, and she's good about the front one too. I'm just showing you, I already picked her hooves and groomed her and stuff. And I know her, her cooler is a little bit too small, but it fits okay just for the trailer ride. I just don't want her butt to get rubbed on the cushions. But let me show you how she acts when I go to pick up that back right. And I don't even know if she'll like make the movement I'm talking about, but let's see. She's a good mama. Good girl. It's okay. Right there. So there's obviously an issue going on. Like it's pretty clear to see. And again, we x-rayed all the way up to the stifle and I think it's higher up. Now I have no idea what could have caused this. Like from being a broodmare and how big as he is, maybe she was bred to, well, she was definitely bred to a large stud. And maybe that process affected her because when they breed the Amish, it's typically not AI, okay? I'm not gonna go into detail, but you know what I mean, okay? So if a big stud was up there, who knows? Um, I mean, it could be anything, okay? We could sit here and try to explain all the possibilities all day long, but that's not normal. Definitely not gonna ride her like that. Um, and again, like she did that a little bit in the beginning, like she was shot on all four, meaning she had four shoes on all hooves, but the Amish do that with a lot of horses, whether they're in work or not. But I mean, she kind of would like step away, but then she'd pick it up fine. She won't even barely let you pick it up. And if she does, you kind of saw, but if you can get it up, she holds and then shakes and slams it down. Okay. So, it's just very strange and it's not shivers from what we understand it could be but we're not thinking it's shivers because when she backs up she doesn't do that okay and typically with shivers when it's this late if they were able to pick up their leg or whatever they would definitely be doing it while they're backing up i'm not 100 percent ruling that out and there's no test for it it's just based off clinical signs but something's wrong okay 
So that's what the plans are. That's why I'm saying, I mean, they're not really good, but they're not like horrible either because we just don't know what's going on. And I'm going to do whatever is best for her. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, well, what's going to be the plan then for her? I don't know. I mean, there's so many options, okay? I'm not even going to talk about it until I know what's going on because even I cannot sit there and make a decision on her future as in, you know, what's going to be best for her, like whether it's training or not training or whatever the case may be until I have more answers and then I can come to a better conclusion to make a good plan for her. But either way, I want to take care of her, put my money into her, do everything I possibly can. Yes, you deserve everything, Miss Bell, you sweet girl. You're such a good girl. She is so beautiful and she is kind. I just think she just, I don't know, it's just sad. There's obviously some level of trauma there, just the way she acts. She just deserves somebody who's going to take the time and do these kind of things and love her because she is valuable. Even if she couldn't be ridden for some reason, which obviously, you know, obviously we don't want that, but whatever's going to be best for her, even if that's the case, she still deserves to be valued. It's not just about riding, okay? I mean, yes, that's my usual goal, but I always know that there is a chance that she might not be physically capable of that or that it's not worth the risk. Like, I don't know. So we're going to see. But I'm going to put her in a stall, let her eat and drink a little bit because we have a drive. It's about three hours. So, yeah. I know, mama. I just feel bad for her. I really do. I mean, just being dumped at an auction and, you know, being pregnant. And it's just, I don't know. I just, I'm just sick of people, to be completely honest. Like, I'm just sick of it. Um in the sense that people think that's okay. And not every auction is bad, you know, but I just, I personally would never send a horse to auction. Like that's just not okay because you don't know what home they're actually going to. A lot of the sales I go to, there are families looking or people like me, but then there's also a lot of flippers or there's just people who see money when they buy the horse. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. I'm not gonna make any money selling my horses. Like there's like one horse I made money on out of all the horses I've had. I don't care about that. I care about working with them in whatever capacity that might be and bettering them. So, yep. All right, girl, let's put you in the stall and then we got to load up in a little bit. Okay, mama, off we go, baby. Off we go. Good job. Hi, Belle. Good girl. Good girl. You got it. <laughs> okay, so we are about halfway there. We are going to Ohio State University, so that's where Belle is going to be for the next few days. She's doing good. We're making frequent stops, just checking on her. She has a hay bag, offering her water. So yeah, all is well so far. We should be there sometime soon. We just got to Ohio State University. I'm gonna be unloading Belle and taking her into the hospital. So hopefully all of that goes well. I probably won't film much in the hospital because I'm gonna be talking to the doctors and figuring out what exactly the game plan is all in all. But yeah, I will keep you updated. So they're not gonna be doing anything today. Today is just arrival, unloading, getting her settled, and then they will do the test over the next couple days. So I'll have more information probably after that. Good girl. It's okay. Oh my gosh, she's huge. Holy cow, 1,400 pounds. It's crazy. It's okay, Belle. I know, baby. You're okay. It's okay, girl. It's okay, Belle. See, you got all that nice bedding. A little sweaty because she's nervous. Good girl. Got her little name tag. It's okay, Bell Bell. Good girl. Hi, Bell Bell. Love you, girl. Okay, you be good. Okay, so we are back at Ohio State University and we are picking up Bell. 
and I am going to talk to you all about the results and everything that we discovered during this exam and visit at OSU soon. Okay, so just waiting for her to come out of the building and we're going to load her in the trailer and take her back home to the farm. The news isn't bad, but there's definitely a few things um, that were a cause of concern, but I do think that they're going to be manageable, so that's good. But I haven't even read the full report. I just talked to the vet, so I want to read it more thoroughly and think about you know, everything that I read in the report and then talk to you more in detail about it. So that's why I don't want to talk about it quite yet because I want to fully read so that I can give you the best explanation. Aren't horses fun? Yeah. Aren't they cheap? No, we're about <laughs> six and a half hours of driving today. <laughs> don't be grumpy. She's like, great, now what am I having to do? Want me to grab her? You gotta put your big head in, sweetheart. Easy. Good girl. Nice job. Good, Belle. You're so sweet. Yeah, you thought. What do you think? We would never sell you like that. Oops, sorry. Here. Good girl. Back home to Free Spirit Farm. Yay. Good girl. Okay, we're gonna get her home, and like I said, once I get the discharge report, which will be later tonight, then I'm going to talk to you about exactly what's going on. Don't panic, it's all okay. We're just gonna have to do what's best for Belle and just work through what's going on with her, okay? So stay tuned, you'll see it very soon. Okay, horse lovers, so Belle is back at the farm. Everything is going well, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what we figured out about her at OSU. So let's talk about so it. So earlier in the video, I told you what I thought was going on and why I really just wanted to take her to get fully evaluated. Well, we did a bone scan, an entire lameness exam, all different types of tests and different things. And basically on the bone scan, everything looks pretty good other than her hocks. There was some inflammation and maybe some upcoming mild arthritis, but nothing that was super major. We did decide to do hock injections, which she got, which is why you saw bandages on her when she was walking out of the hospital. So honestly, that was nothing major. However, the thing is the hock inflammation and arthritis doesn't exactly explain what is going on with her fully. So we do believe that it's probably something neurological, possibly shivers, but the issue with shivers is there's really not a test to determine it's based off clinical signs and we still can't fully say that it is shivers. It could be something like PSSM1 or something along those lines. Now I did do a genetic screening test with Esmeralda. She got an entire screening and Esmeralda, her full was completely clear of all of those genetic markers. Now I am gonna do one for Belle too. I did the color test on Belle, but I need to do one that's more in depth and I haven't done it yet, but I'm definitely gonna be doing it now. So I'm actually gonna gather those samples today and send them in and hopefully get the results in a couple weeks or so and go from there. But I do think there is just something of a genetic component and neurological, the way that she is kind of picking up her legs and all of that. So I'm glad we did it because we can rule out something major like a pelvis fracture or something along those lines but we're still sitting here kind of guessing with the information we got. So that is everything in a nutshell, but I guess a lot of you are gonna be like, okay, well, what does that mean? Like, what am I gonna do with Belle? What's the plan? So right now, as I said, she got the hock injections and she has to be in a small paddock for two to four weeks, which is great because that's exactly where she is. And I have another friend in the side paddock, so she's not alone. So I'm rotating horses in and out of that side paddock so that she has someone. So that's working out good. Now, during this time frame, over the next two to six weeks, we'll have to see how the hock injections are helping her. 
Is it totally improving how she lifts her leg? Is it doing nothing at all? So it's really just kind of a wait and see type of game. And that's pretty much the plan. Just very light exercise, paddock rest, and then just seeing how the injections will help or maybe not help at all. And then we're gonna go from there. So as of right now, my vet and I, plus the vet at OSU, still think it's beneficial to start training her. Now, obviously during this phase, she's gonna have to rest, but then after that, we don't see any reason why she can't be in training. Now, is this gonna limit some of her capabilities? Yeah, like she's not gonna go be a Grand Prix horse or anything like that but she could still have a decent career. But before I do anything or make any decisions about her future plan and her training, I just wanna wait and see how the Hawk injections are actually working. So that's the phase we're in right now. Other than that, she's happy. She did drop a little bit of weight. I think that's just from the stress of weaning, even though she wasn't showing tons of outwardly signs, but that, and then going to OSU, I mean, she just had a lot going on. I mean, this poor mare just all in all has been through so much. So I'm really hoping that we can now get her on the path to success because she is amazing. And I did this because I want to know. I want to do everything I can for her and obviously all of my horses. And I didn't want to just throw her into training thinking, okay, yeah, we'll just see if this improves. Now we have a little bit more to go off of and a treatment plan. And we're just going to play it day by day. I mean, that's really all you can do in this situation. What do you think? <laughs> But yeah, she's definitely opening up so much more versus when she first got here. And it's the dead of winter right now. I mean, spring is coming, so that's gonna help a lot. But yeah, we're just gonna see. So right now the plan is rest and then get her into a training regimen. Now, again, it's gonna depend on how she's doing once we see how everything settles in with the injections and the rest and all of that. But my goal is to do some groundwork with her and then start training her. Now, with the weaning, it is really hard because my outdoor arena is right next to Esmeralda. <laughs> That's my sweatshirt. What are you doing? You're so funny. My outdoor arena is right next to where Esmeralda is. And I honestly, there is no way that I can train her without her seeing Ezzy. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. There may be a situation where I have to board her somewhere and potentially just for the first month or two, get some training on her. Either I'll board her and train her or find a trainer who I trust that's nearby. I still haven't decided yet. It's just a weird situation. I mean, with Lumiere not being able to be with the mares and you know Esmeralda and Ariel, and then just her whole situation plus the training, like <laughs> apparently I just love to create challenges for myself. But honestly, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know she was pregnant when I bought her because that was not disclosed, but luckily we did the vetting and found that out. Okay, so this whole situation was not something that I just brought on myself, but at the same time, I am so thankful that it happened. Okay, I'm so thankful that Belle is in my life. And again, it's just not all about riding. It's not all about training. For myself, it's about doing what's best for the horse in whatever capacity that may be. And it might be we get her in training and she's just not gonna be suitable for riding. Like, I don't know. That is the goal. But if she's not happy and it's not going well after the initial training, then we'll see what else is gonna be best for her. Okay, just taking it day by day. I am gonna, again, do more genetic testing on her to see if she's clear or has any markers just to be safe. But even if she did, she still can have a fully functional <laughs> life. And the good news is we didn't find anything that was like crazy, you know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that. So we can rule out anything massive. Now we just have to Go with the flow. So those are some of my thoughts and ideas. You know, it's all still fresh for me, so I'm still thinking about it. Once I determine what's gonna be best for her, I will let you know, but she is not gonna be sold anytime soon. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about her career plan. Having horses and taking care of them the right way is not easy and it's very expensive. Like that trip was thousands of dollars. And I'm just telling you this because it's just the reality of owning horses. I'm really hopeful that Belle, you know, can have some type of riding career. And if not that, then something else will figure it out. But I'm feeling very positive about the whole situation versus before I took her. Like I was a little bit worried, but yeah, I feel a lot more positive about it. So we'll just see. You're such a good girl. You really are. And she gave me Esmeralda, who's just so special. So I just have to do anything I can for her. And I would anyway, obviously, but you just know, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much it, horse lovers. Thank you for following our journey, especially Bells. It has been quite an interesting one. I've had her for just about one year now and so much has happened within that year. 
Also, if you want to support Free Spirit Equestrian, the best way to do that is to order something off the Spirited Horse Boutique, a link in the description. Right now, I'm wearing my Galloping and Gold lip gloss, and we have a bunch of other equestrian themed products. So if you want to support us, the link is in the comments and the description. Thank you. You're such a good mama, huh? You are. But yeah, everything is calm here right now. I mean, nobody's been calling out the last couple days since she's been home, and yeah. But like I said, it's hard because I can't even really take her out to the hitching post because as you will see her and they'll start calling out. It's just difficult. I don't have a huge property, so it is hard that way. Um, and I mean, obviously I knew weeding was coming, but I didn't know how it was going to go. I mean, Ezzy's my first full and all of that. So it's been fun. <laughs> Well, horse lovers, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian or any updates with Belle, Ezzy, or the other horses, and we'll see you next time. Bye!